I passed your test. Fate has a twisted sense of humor, it seems. I suppose you think I'm some sort of monster. More so since I survived your ritual. You keep striking at me, and I just refuse to die decently. Oh? What was all that nonsense with the Darkspawn blood and mages, then? A puppet show? It seems to me that magic has already failed. I'd recommend a sharp knife in the kidneys next time. Less impressive, but it gets the job done. Why should I? I'm a strategist by trade, after all. Should a fine plan be abandoned simply because it ends in my own demise? That seems like such a waste of a good idea. Yes, well, you can thank me for that later. I don't know what concession you want from me, Warden. I expect my word will not satisfy you. Indeed, I'd almost forgotten that. Thank you for the reminder. I think it's time we got to the point here. What do you want from me? I can't imagine that you spared my life in the lands meet by accident. You have some plan in mind. What I want? What an odd question. I want to ride back to Denerim and sit in the war room and find no empty chairs at the table. I want to lose nothing else. I want a line clearly drawn that I can defend. I want an end to this war. All of this can rightly be called my fault. Whether or not you can do better remains to be seen. But if you can make this the end, Warden, I will follow you, I swear it. I suppose we'll see how long that lasts. We should speak no more of this at present. Time's wasting. Ah, now there's the venom I expected. Well, is that it? Surely you have more to say to me than that. Go on, try out all the curses and insults you know. I'll teach you some new ones if they don't suffice. Do you honestly think that among all my crimes, that is the one that keeps me awake at night? The plight of a few dozen elves in the face of all the hundreds who died at Ostagar, the countless others fighting the civil war that followed, seems irrelevant. Because it seemed necessary at the time got people out of the most indefensible part of the city and put money in the coffers at the same time. The whole kingdom is about to be lost. What does principle matter now? But the truth of things hardly matters now. You've won. You can decide whatever you like about my guilt. And now what? Am I to be some trophy of your victory? The defeated enemy you drag about on a leash wherever you go? Or have you some worse fate in mind for me? Yes, well, you can thank me for that later. I don't know what concession you want from me, Warden. I expect my word will not satisfy you. I assure you. It's foremost on my mind. I think it's time we got to the point here. What do you want from me? My execution was all but arranged. If you'd wanted me dead, you could have had your wish at the lands meet. I assume, then, that you have something else in mind. Your candor, Warden, is inspiring. Let me follow your example. You and I have been adversaries for some time, and I don't expect that to change now. Despite what we each wanted, we're both here now facing the same enemy, and we can be of use to one another, however little we may enjoy that fact. I am a soldier, you know, and it has come to my attention that you've been looking to build some armies. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised at your success. You beat me. Perhaps you can do this after all. Do you want something? Well, I suppose I have a moment. Hate doesn't describe it. I've seen painted masked lords beat an old farmer to death with riding crops. To this day, I don't know why. 
Is that hate? I saw good, sensible men fight armoured chevaliers with nothing. No weapons, no armies, not even hope of success to see the occupation end. Is that hate? Nothing about war is right. It's a force of nature, like rain, or wind, or faith. It simply exists, and we deal with its consequences. My reasons weren't wrong. I wanted to defend my home. I made tactical errors, however. In any case, there's no use discussing this. We have much work left to do. Go ahead. He was my friend. If he'd wanted to conquer the Fade, I would have led the charge. There are men who inspire such devotion that everyone around would lay down their lives for him. And there are men who would come and go from this world, and no one notes it. What makes them so? Your guess is as good as mine. Merrick was remarkable. That's all I can say of him. I was hunting, well, poaching, to be entirely honest, when a boy my own age came stumbling out of the woods. He was so dirty, you'd have thought he'd been dug up out of the ground. Every Ferelden was a poacher or a thief, as far as the Orlesians were concerned. He was bloody, exhausted, and obviously being hunted. I offered to take him to my father's camp. That's a story for another time, I'm afraid. I've gone on too long as it is. He nearly did. Merrick was never one to avoid his duty, and given his preference, he would have acknowledged his son no matter the circumstance. But he had more than his honor to think of. It would have ruined Rowan, after all. She'd be reduced to a concubine in the eyes of our neighbors and put Caelan's status as heir in question. So Merrick made the hard choice. Eamon offered to raise the boy, and that was that. Kings don't get the luxury of escaping politics. But we've been idle long enough. We should get moving. Go ahead. I suppose that depends on how much of the kingdom was left by then. Once the border was secure, the army would have regrouped to push back the Darkspawn in the south. <laughs> we couldn't, especially after Ostagar. It wasn't an ideal plan, but it seemed necessary at the time. In any case, there's no use discussing this. We have much work left to do. Go ahead. Eamon is a shrewd man. He'll be advising the boy. He'll do all right, I suppose. Doing all right is not the same as doing well. Your friend may get good advice from Eamon, but he's weak. All the bands know it. You can see them. A pack of wild dogs waiting for a bone. The first chance they get, They'll pry concessions out of him. They'll pick at the throne until it's only a gilded chair with no power or authority at all. Because Eamon, for all his merits, is a conservative man. He believes in tradition and inheritance, and would never see the daughter of a freeholder, however gifted, in power. I was a Tyran, but my father was a farmer, as was his father and all the generations of McTeers that history remembers. And Celia, my wife, was a cabinet maker's daughter. Hardly a royal pedigree. This discussion profits no one. I may be wrong. I will certainly hope so. By all means. Honora is a good queen. She has been for five years now. Whatever she might think, I never took power from Honora. She may have felt threatened, but I most pointedly did not remove her from the throne. In all seriousness, 
Anora is formidable. You should know that by now. They always have before. Few among the nobles have ever been under any illusions as to who really held power in Denerim. Anora is strong enough to endure. She may make a few mistakes along the way, but she'll survive them. But this isn't the time to discuss such things. By all means. Anora always did have a flair for the dramatic. She could have been a bard. It took you this long to determine that. <laughs> I'm surprised. Is that a serious question? Is there someone else you know of who could stand up to the land's meat? But enough about Anora. We ought to get moving. Go ahead. So far as anyone could tell, she was the undisputed monarch of the whole world. She'd fall, skin her knees, and command them to stop stinging. <laughs> It may have worked, too. <laughs> I suppose she was. It's the peculiar joy of parents to be terrorized by their children, however. If you're expecting some particular insight into my daughter's character, I'm afraid I'm probably not the best source. I'm hardly impartial. You think so? I'm not certain of that myself. But this is not really the time or place to discuss my daughter. We have work to do.